نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له نشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران الكريم لقد قان في قصصهم عبره لاولي الالباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمه لقوم يؤمنون صدق الله العظيم ان شاء الله ان توديز توك اي ويل بي ديسكسينج ثري بوينتس فروم ذا لايف اوف ابراهيم عليه الصلاه والسلام نمبر 1 بارت ويل بي ريجاردينج وات از ذا بيربس اوف ذا ستوريز ذات الله سبحانه وتعالى هاز منشند ان ذا قران اي ويل جست بريفلي تاتش اباوت ذات سبجكت and then i'll go into uh, uh, some brief snapshots from the life of ibrahim alayhi uh, salatu wasalam and from that we'll try to extract the lessons from the life of ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and also the third part will be try to connect those lessons to today's life so for, as the ayah i just recited which is from surah al-yusuf allah azza wa jalla is saying laqad kana fi qasasihim ibrah li ulul albab that there is there is a ibra there is a lesson for the people who think who ponder in the story in, in their stories the quran when we look at that we find that the quran can be divided into three parts one part of the quran goes into the details about the iman or the aqida or faith creed and the other part goes into the amal talking about the actions that a believer is supposed to undertake and the third part talks about the stories of the previous people and that includes the lives of the prophets uh stories of the righteous people who passed in the past or even the the people like firaun namrud and abu lahab and uh, the one who were we are supposed to prevent from i mean not to not to follow their actions and the stories of the righteous people as well So today when we are discussing the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam we find a uh, very interesting uh, uh, interesting stories in his life that are mentioned in the Quran and in the ahadith and sometime uh, we find those stories uh, actually some of the mufassirin they even report some of the things from israiliyat which is from uh, uh, the books of uh, whether the christians are carrying now Uh, or the Jews are carrying now. Uh, they can refer to them as the uh, as the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, uh, his life is something that is most discussed, not only by the Muslims, but as well as by the Christians and the Jews. This is why sometimes you find some uh, contradictions in some of the stories which are mentioned by them. Uh, and now when the Eid al-Adha is, uh, is close and the Hajj is going to be in about 10, 10 11 days uh, we will see that uh, many people will be discussing this uh, the stories of, of Ibrahim alayhi salam so it is a good time to discuss this and refresh the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and to understand why uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned those stories so we can connect to the, 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 those stories with, with our life as well and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions that uh, It's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned stories of all the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen some of the prophets' lives have been mentioned to us. There were more prophets than the ones which are mentioned in the Quran and in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلٌ مِّنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَسَسْنَا عَلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ وَمَنْ لَمْ نَقْسُسْ عَلَيْكَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that we are telling you the stories of some of them and we are, telling you, we are not telling you the stories of the others. So it's not that Allah has mentioned the stories of all the prophets. So he has selectively mentioned the one that we need. So that's useful for us to understand why these stories are mentioned. And in the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, one of the most striking thing that we find is he that he's like a symbol of sacrifice you see him. This is why even when we are doing the Eid al-Adha, we go and in the remembrance of his sacrifice that he made we go and slaughter the animals 
the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recommended us. So this is one of the key aspects of his life that we see. Now, what is the connection of Allah with us? But before I go there, there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu that discusses the issue of the sacrifice or the hardship that people go through. And uh, this hadith is narrated by Musab bin Sa'ad. And he, he's reporting from his father, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas. He says that uh, uh, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas said, قَالَ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَيُّ النَّاسِ أَشَدُّ بَلَا That uh, which are the people who, goes, who are tested the most? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قَالَ ثُمَّ, uh, ثم الْأَمْثَلُ فَالْأَمْثَلُ That Anbiya, the prophets, and the one who are like them, and the, the one who are like them. And the, this hadith continues on, uh, uh, so I'm going to just rephrase the rest of the hadith, and it goes on and on to the person, the one who has a lesser of the iman, lesser of the uh, 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 iman and the strength, uh, he will be tested at his level. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا بُسَاحًا That we do, not, we do not put the taklif, we do not make him mukallif, a person, a responsibility on him, unless he has the, uh, the capacity to endure that, uh, uh, that hardship. So the hadith continues on, and the person who is very weak in his, uh, in his deen, he will be tested in a, with, a, with, a, uh, with a light test. Until the person will be will be walking on the earth like he has no khatiyya, no, 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 uh, no sin on him. Because any kind of a hardship a person goes through, and if he comes out of the hardship successfully, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes, uh, takes away the sins from him. And that helps him to wash away the sins. Uh, but the, the, the key thing here is that, that you have to be successful in the test Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting us through the trial or the tribulation that we are going through. And this is what we'll see that in the life of Ibrahim salam, and this is something very interesting, I found that every time a story of Ibrahim salam is mentioned with the sacrifice he made, it ends up with something that Allah is giving him in return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continually talking about like, وَوَهَبْنَا الْإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ Like we have given him as a gift, Ishaq, uh, Ishaq and Yaqub. Like the sons, uh, uh, and both of them, and even the uh, other, other sons of the Zuriya, the children of Ishaq, they were all became prophets later on. So this is uh, uh, an interesting thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning even in the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that whenever he went through a hardship, he ended up with something, uh, something good for him. And this is what happens to any believer. And so this part of the sacrifice, if we understand, meaning that we are sacrificing in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we are tested with any kind of a thing, and again, remember that, that, that idea that we are all tested according to our capacity, that what we can pass. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not dhalim. Allah is not the one who will be, tested, uh, will be testing us with something that we cannot pass. So test is unfair if we do not have the capacity to pass it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always put us in a test which we have the capability of. So now in the case of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرُ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, go, mention in the book the story of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, and he was a truthful Nabi, he was a truthful prophet. And this story, that this part, this section of the story, I'll talk about his relationship with his father. What happened when he was discussing with his father about the message that he received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is giving in a very rational and intellectual way. And I'll, I'll repeat this story in two different ways. Once when he was discussing with his father, and then when he's talking to his people. When he's discussing with his father, he said, إِذْ قَالَ لِيَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِي لِمَا تَعْبَدُوا مَا لَا يَسْمَعُوا وَلَا يُبُسِرُوا وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيَّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, oh, when he said to his father, that, يَا أَبَتِي Ya Abati is one of the very nice way of calling your father with the love. You're calling your father with love, oh my beloved father. He's saying, oh father, why do you worship something who does not, la yasma wa la who does not hear, who does not see? And he does not give you any kind of a benefit. So look, he's not just coming and telling, I have the haq and go live, follow my, whatever I have. No, he is making him think. He, he wants his father to rationalize this, this idea of who, who are you worshipping? As his father, he said, Ya Abati, inni, uh, he said to his father, Ya Abati, inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tika fattaba'ani ahdika surat al sawiyya That he's saying, oh father, indeed there has come to me the knowledge that which has not come to you. So he's saying it's still in a very nice way. There's something I have, but oh my father, oh my beloved father, the one who I love, 
he's not being harsh to him. He's saying in a very loving way. So when he is conveying the message, he is saying that, uh, that there's some knowledge that I have attained, I have acquired, that you do not have. I want to share this knowledge with you. So let's have this discussion going. And he said, Ya Abati, لا, لا تعبد الشيطان إن الشيطان كان للرحمن عصية that he is saying that oh my father oh my beloved father do not worship the shaitan because shaitan is uh, indeed shaitan has ever been to the most merciful disobedient he is the one who is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, this discussion with his father and Ibrahim alayhi salam continues on until his father he says to him قَالَ that don't you feel anything that desire of my gods? Because his father was in the business of making gods. He's making the gods with his own hand. He's not like a, one of the guys who no, doesn't know what the gods are. He's the one who's making them. So he's saying, don't you feel anything closeness to him? And he says, <coughs> and he goes, that he said, that he said, peace be unto you, and I will ask for forgiveness for you. Because his father has shown the way that he is not going to listen to him. Because the previous ayah, he says, لا إلَّا تَنْتَهِي لَأَرْجُمَنَّكَ وَأَهْجُرْنِ مَلِيَّةً That he said, I will surely stone you. I will surely stone you, so you avoid me a prolonged time. So he, he, is going to, he was going to hurt Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So now he is departing away from him. Because there's a line he drew here. That yes, he was going to convey the message as long as he's listening. If he's not listening, he says, okay, I'm going to ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Ibrahim alayhi salam was allowed to ask for forgiveness at that time for his father. And then he goes, And I will leave you. <coughs> and I will leave you and those who invoke other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what he did. See, this is an interesting part. Now, he departed away from his father. <coughs> so one of the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Ibrahim والسلام, right away, is he's saying, that we have given him, we have gifted him, the Ibrahim, uh, Ishaq and Yaqub. So a hardship that he's going through of departing away from the father, it is resulting in him a good tidings, glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in other places, inna ma'al usri yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra. That Allah, that every usr, every hardship is followed by a yusr, followed by a ease. <coughs> and as the Mufassireen discusses this ayah, that in those two ayat, even though seeming they look same, the usr is the same, but the yusr is different. Meaning the hardship is the same in both the ayat, but the ease that Allah is giving in return, both of them are different. Meaning, for if each hardship that you go through, Allah will give you two ease in return. Two or more actually. So now, in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding Ibrahim alayhi salam that he will give him Ishaq wa Yaqub. Now, the, the reason I'm talking about this idea is, look, here, the relationship with the father, where he had to go away from him because for the sake of Islam. For the sake of Islam, to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the other story <coughs> that we find in his uh, life is with his son. Which is a little bit interesting that with his son, the one he actually, uh, he, uh, uh, if you want to use the word deserted, that he left him in Mecca with his wife. With nobody around him and just a little bit of water, and uh, the, like the, uh, like the, the, the Fasid discusses that, about the food for about two days or so. And he left them in the barren land. There's nothing around it. But the very same son, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses the story about it, and he says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعْيَا قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّا إِنِّي يَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكَ فَانْذُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى Now here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is discussing about Ismail alayhi salam. And uh, just want to take a break about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, story. Uh, before I go into the detail of, of this, uh, how he was going to sacrifice his son, uh, there is a, <coughs> there's a thing about among the Christians, they, discuss, they say that the story was about Ishaq alayhi salam. Uh, it is very clear from the Bible itself as well, the story is about Ismail and it's not about Ishaq. 
so I'm not going to go into the detail of it, but if, uh, if we go into this kind of discussion with anybody, even the Bible discusses in the way the Bible itself is a proof, even the current version of the Bible, that Ibrahim was ordered to sacrifice Ismail and not Ishaq, even though they, uh, they say because of jealousy that uh, <coughs> how can you relate to, to somebody who was linked to Muhammad that, uh, that Ismail is the one who was ordered to be sacrificed. But anyways, the story just goes like this. And when he reached the Sa'ya, Sa'ya means uh, <coughs> he's got strength. He became youth. And uh, some of the Tafasi discussed he was about 13 years old. So he's not, uh, Ismail was not, uh, Ismail was not somebody who, is, uh, uh, who doesn't know what's going on. He can comprehend the things. And at that age, Ibrahim salam, he saw the dream. And he goes to his son and he goes, again, like his father, when he was saying, Ya Abati, he discussed with his son the same way. He says, Ya Bunayya. Bunayya is again, it's not uh, <coughs> Ya Ibni or Ya Walad. You are saying it with love. You are showing your love, oh my beloved son. In the era fil manami, I see in my dream. And like that, the Fasir discussed, he did not see this in one time. He saw this dream three times. And this is why during the Hajj, the first day is uh, the, the eighth of the Dhul Hajjah is considered, it's called Yawm Tarwiya. And the second one is called uh, uh, Yawm Arafah. And the third one is called Yawm Nahar. Because the first one, he was still talking to himself. Is this dream a dream from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is it from Shaitan? So he's trying to figure out, is this real or not? When the second time he came, so now he knew. He, know, he knows now. So Arafah, this is why it's Yawm Arafah. So he knew now, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third day is Yawm Nahar, because he went to slaughter Ismail alayhi salam. And this is when we, when we slaughter the, the, the animals. Now, when he, so he, he's not just going and uh, tricking his son. He's telling him, Allah has ordered me to do this. Yeah, but I want to know what you think. Okay? Allah has ordered me, because he saw in the dream that I saw, I see you, I see that I am slaughtering you, sacrificing you for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you think? Now he says the very same like uh, Ibrahim was talking to his, uh, his father before. He said, Qala ya abati. Remember the word abati he was using? Now he is using for Ibrahim alayhi salam. If alma tu'mal, satajadun insha'Allah min al sabirin that you will see, do what Allah has ordered you to do. You will find me from the one who do the sabr, who are persevere, who will stick with what Allah has ordered, and the one who will insha'Allah will be the one, you will find them from the sabirin. Now, point to take for the fathers here to understand this. Ismail alayhi salam was about 13 years old. And his response to that is, that do as Allah has ordered you to do. Look, the kids, whether it's, and he's not a kid, he's 13 year old, and as, as we understand, now he has become, an, uh, he was entering into adulthood. He was raised this way by Ibrahim alayhi salam, that he, he replied like this. So you have to have a tarbiyah like this, that when the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, you reply like this, that he say, Qala ya abadi if'al, if'al ma umar, that do as Allah has ordered you to do, as you have been ordered. So this come, does not come out of thin air. This kind of uh, the children, so don't expect that the children will be listening to us without any kind of uh, tarbiyah we do to the, ch to the children. Of course, at the end of the day, everybody has his own choice, even in Islam. So you can uh, uh, counter example of Nuh salam's son also. But here, we have to understand that we cannot expect our children to act like Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, or Abu Bakr Siddiq, or Uthman or Ali radiallahu anhu. You cannot expect them to act like that while we act like Abu Jahl, while we act like Abu, Abu Lahab, while we act like Walid bin Mughira, and so on and on and on. And we are the examples uh, uh, we have to set an example for our kids in a way that they will follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he's asking his son to go through this test, he's not asking him to go through this test without preparing him as well. So Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, was prepared for this task as well. So some, again, as I said, I'd like to not only talk about these stories in, a, 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 in vacuum. 
We have to think about ourselves, that how, what kind of a lesson we are extracting out of it. These stories will be discussed everywhere. We have to think about, what do I take with this? What is my role when I am listening to this story? Or any stories mentioned in the Quran? Whether it's the story that where we are told to avoid the action or whether we are told to do the action like it. So, anyways, the story goes on. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَطَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ Now, here, the word which is used is aslama. Aslama is not for Ibrahim والسلام, only. That he submitted or he obeyed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, no. It is used for the dual, for two people. So Ibrahim and Ismail, both of them, the aslama. وَطَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ And he put, the, put, the, uh, put his fore, uh, forehead down. Now, uh, the tafsir discusses like this. Actually, this was a suggestion by Ismail alayhi salam to his father. One of them says because he wanted to be sacrificed in the state of the sajda. So his forehead is downward. Other one discusses, so the love of the father towards the son will not come in the way to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he will be looking into his eyes. It may distract Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Ismail told him that do this way. So you will, you will not find any barriers to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, وَنَدَيْنَهُ أَيَّا Ibrahim, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we called out to him, O Ibrahim, قَدْ صَدَقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا إِنَّ كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسَنِينَ That you have fulfilled the dream. You have fulfilled the order. Ru'ya here is the, of course is the dream, but the dream of a prophet is, uh, is wahi. So it was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa to do an action. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to them as where does we, where that inna uh, kadhalika nazil muhsineen that you are from the muhsineen, the righteous one. And then Allah is the one who is accepting this idea that this, this thing uh, that inna hadha lahu wal bala ul mubeen this, this trial, this bala, this tribulation that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa was going through it is a clear clear uh, 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 test or uh, trial for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. It's a, it's a big test. So it's not that it's a small test to think about a father to go and sacrifice his own son. Because it's, you are, you're discussing here some, something that you really, uh, something very close to you. And that the people who are parents here, they can, they can understand what it means to, uh, to sacrifice your own son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, uh, 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 gave him a ransom. Uh, one of the hadith talks about, it's a kapsh. Kapsh is the ram. Uh, uh, um, in, in Urdu, we say menda. I don't know what's the exact English term. Ram, everybody understands, I guess. So to, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the ram from the Jannah, and there was slaughtered. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked, and we left for him a goodly remembrance among later generation. See, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again talking about a, a, a reward for him right away. He went through such a big test, and Allah is talking about the reward right away. I'm not going into the whole detail about how he was going to slaughter the, uh, Ismail alayhi salam and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him, because the main idea is to understand that he was going to sacrifice his sons, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his sacrifice. And so now, what do we take out of that? That's the key thing again. So every time we uh, to take, uh, read the stories, we have to understand, what do I take out of it? What I take out of it is, is that no matter what comes in our way to follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's my children, whether it's my, uh, my, my, uh, our spouses, whether it's our, our, our parents, whoever comes in the way to, uh, to, uh, uh, to fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't matter who they are, we have to stick with the command and continue on, whatever it is. Now, and then Allah says, Salamu ala Ibrahim kadhalika nazil muhsaneen innahu min ibadan al-mu'min wa basharnahu bi ishaq nabiyya min al-salihin Again, like the previous story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about wa wahabna ishaq wa yaqub Here, Allah is talking about wa basharnahu wa ishaq So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving another glad tiding again about ishaq alayhi salam Now, <coughs> the third story that we find and I'll, inshallah at the end, I'll try to come up with a uh, the connection with the today's life as well about all these stories. The third one that we talk about uh, in the, the stories of Ibrahim Islam that we hear all the time, which is regarding the aqidah. Uh, when uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, li abihi, adhara inni wa mubin. And he said, 
when Ibrahim والسلام, said to his father Azar that uh, the Asnam, the, the idol that you take as the God, I see you and your, and, and your nation. They are on a clear deviation. And uh, in this story, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed Ibrahim والسلام, uh, different signs. And sometimes people think, because of these signs, Ibrahim والسلام, came, to, uh, came to Islam or came to this Iman. No, that's not the, the story. The story is Allah is teaching Ibrahim والسلام, to show them to make them rationalize these things. That when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can see the things, the signs around you that can make you think, make you convinced that Allah is the one who is the creator of the universe. So the aqidah settles in your mind. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ibrahim malakuta samawati wal Thus did we show Ibrahim salam, the kingdom of the heavens and the earth that he be one of those who have faith with certainty. Okay? And then the, the story continues, فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلُ رَأَ كَوْكَبَ That when, uh, uh, when the night took over, night covered, Jannah is the cover, when the night covered the day, and uh, he saw the kawkaba, the star. So he said, قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي فَلَمَّا أَفَلَا قَالَ لَا أُحِبُّ لَا فَلِينَ He said, okay, the star is my God. But when he saw Afali, that he, he, the, 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 sun set, the star set, he said, no, 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 no. My God cannot be the one who goes away. And then the story goes, فَلَمَّا رَعَ الْقَمَرَ بَازِغًا قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي And when he saw the sun or moon, and he said the very same thing again. But he saw again the, 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 the moon was set as well. And then he saw the, shum, uh, and, and, uh, and the, the sun and, the, and he said the same thing again. The, the sun also set. So he cannot be my Rabb, my Ilah. So he said, إِنِّي وَجْهَاتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Okay, so now he says, I have turned my face towards him who has created the heavens and the earth and worshipping none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am not uh, of the mushrikeen. I am not from the mushrikeen, the one who are deviated. Okay, now <clears throat> about this part, so what do we get out of, this is like a, the key, key thing here. Again, he was discussing all this to his nation. And he was talking to them. So now, there are three things that I really want to discuss out of the stories that we have discussed here. Of the Ibrahim والسلام, Of course, the key idea of the life of Ibrahim that we see is, uh, um, is his sacrifice. But besides that, <clears throat> We have to understand what is the condition of this sacrifice today in life. Sacrifice and the things that he did. Now today, the time that, uh, and the era that we are going through, one of the things that we hear about Ibrahim والسلام, left and right everywhere is he is the founder of three major religions. Or they are associated to him as Abrahamic religions. So that's one key thing we have to understand. That just because Islam, Judaism, and Christianity seem to have the linkage towards Ibrahim salam does not mean Ibrahim salam came with these three different religions. Or any prophet. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent every prophet with the message of Islam. With the deen of Islam. La ilaha illallah. This is true that different prophets were given different sharia for that specific nation and time. But when Rasulullah became prophet, he came with the sharia that abrogates all the previous ones. But the message as a prophet was same, they're worshipping one Allah, okay, and the same God. So when people say that the concept of Abrahamic religions like this, as if that Ibrahim that their religions came off the lineage of Ibrahim as a Muslim, of course, the non-Muslim, they can use whatever term they want. As a Muslim, we do not use this term because we do not believe that Ibrahim came with uh, some, uh, some different kind of a religion than Islam. Or Musa came with Judaism. Or Isa came with Christianity. We understand from the Quran itself all the prophets were Muslims. They were all Muslims. So, uh, because if you just want to say that because they are from the same lineage, 
Then why even stay at Ibrahim? Why don't we call all the religions Azari? Because his father was Azar. Why I stay at Azar? Go all the way to Adam alayhi salam. So all the religions are same then. So we have to be careful about when we use these kind of terminologies. And what is the idea behind it when people are using the terms as Abrahamic religions? So there's a specific reason that these terms are coined. It is to deviate the, the discussion regarding Islam being an ideology. Islam is a way of life. It's different than Judaism and Christianity. Islam is the, is the, is the message that was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to different prophets. And Rasulullah was the last prophet. And there's no, no wahi after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So we cannot say that all these religions are Abrahamic religions. Otherwise, we should not be calling Islam that we follow today. We might maybe probably calling it, as a matter of fact, in some places in India and Pakistan especially, they try to coin this term of Muhammadan. We don't call ourselves Muhammadans. We are Muslims. If that would have been the case, that anything that came out after Rasulullah which was, they were not Muslim even, then we should be calling them also Muhammadan. Whether they are Qadiani, whether they are Ismaili, whether they are whosoever, the one who actually went out of Islam. So we'll be calling them Rasulullah came with these religions? Of course not. So similarly, Abrahamic religions is not a term that we use. Second thing <coughs> that we find in the life of Ibrahim and we should uh, learn from that, and as, we, as, as I mentioned in the beginning, that in these stories Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ibra, the lessons to learn. Okay? Now, what is the lesson uh, uh, the, the, from the last story that we talked about? So when it comes to the aqidah and the iman, Ibrahim والسلام, is teaching them very clearly. Just using your rationale, you will come to the conclusion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, is the only one who was the creator of the whole universe. You can, we cannot say that somebody else is partnered with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for this, the thing that we, needs to be used is the rationale. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at many, many places is talking about the, the signs for the people who are ulul al-bab. The one who are yatafakkaroon, one who are yaqiloon, one who are mudabbiroon, uh, the one who think, the one who ponder, the one who reason, and on and on and on and on. But this is all goes back to the aqidah and the iban. So this is the second thing that we can learn for Ibrahim Islam's life. Third thing, and as we are seeing today, <coughs> that what's happening in Syria. The kind of hardships the Muslims in Syria or in the other parts of the world uh, and not only Muslims, anyone non-Muslims alike. The, the hardship that they are going through. So now, those hardships that they are going through, inshallah, they will get the hasanat for all the hardship that they're going through, number one thing. But besides that, we have to understand now what is our role in taking care of these kinds of hardships. We cannot uh, sit back and think that it will be taken care by or by, automatically, or taken care by different states the, uh, who have nothing to do with even Islam. They are the one who will be taking the refugees and taking care of it. We understand that they are the, the, these Muslim brothers and sisters. They are stuck between uh, multiple tyrants at the same time. So they leave Bashar and they end up with some other tyrant. So we, as a Muslim, have to understand there are certain obligations which are individual on every Muslim and there are certain obligations which are ishtiba'i or the uh, which is called fardul ayn and fardul kifaya. They both need to be fulfilled and every individual is accountable for his actions. So now we have to understand what is our role in all the news that we are seeing around us. Is our role is just turn our face to the other side and continue to talk about the wudu, salah, and zakah, and hajj to the people, while the people are suffering to that extent that you find a three-year-old upside down at the shore of the, the, of the sea. Because he's just trying, they're just trying to run away from the tyrant. 
All we have to do is think about it. If it's my own son, my own daughter, and if it's not today, maybe tomorrow. Allah knows the best. Whose turn it will be? This is something that we to think about. Look, the lesson for Ibrahim والسلام, is, we can think of sacrifice as, oh, this is a sacrifice that uh, 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 I, a sister has to put the hijab on. Or the brother, he has to stay away from liquor. Or uh, uh, we are not, uh, uh, we are avoiding riba, that's more, enough, more than enough for us. This is a sacrifice I have done for my part. Yes, everybody will be accountable according to his own capacity. There's, there's no doubt about that. But every one of us should go and question ourselves. Is this really my capacity? Is this my really capacity that only thing I can do is get involved in the spiritual aspect of Islam and forget about the rest of the Islam? Is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from me? This is the question we should be asking when we study the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Not just uh, going and thinking, oh, I have slaughtered the animal on the day of the Eid, or I went for the Hajj, and that's enough for my, my end. Yes, we have done part of Islam that is expected from us, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what about all those atrocities that are happening around us, that we'll be asked about? Yes, to, to take care of those things, that will require sacrifice. That will require sacrifice. Nobody's saying that. And this is what we have to think about when we're looking at it. I got appalled that one, of, that one time when I hear things like, if you can grow the longer beard, this is the sacrifice when you are emulating the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. So we really have to think, and I'm going to leave it here about when we think about these things, we think from these three angles. Uh, the story that we discussed here. The lessons that we should be extracting out of it, insha'Allah. One is, Ibrahim والسلام, came with Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very clear about this. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ فَلَنْ يُقُبَلْ مِنُهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no deen will be accepted except Islam. So when we are talking about Ibrahimic religion, think about that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying He will not accept anything but Islam. When we think of Ibrahim والسلام, the way he separated himself from his father, think of this. Ya ayyuhal ladina amalu, la tatakhidu aba'akum wa ikhwanakum awliya, inna stahabu al-kufra ala al-iman. O you who believe, do not take your fathers and your brothers as the awliya, as your protectors, as the, 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 friend, the friendly ones, if they prefer kufr over iman. So that, that this is what we have to take with us. And when we think of the sacrifice that Ibrahim والسلام, made, then we have to think of it on every action that we're undertaking. Every obligation is, uh, 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 is on us, whether it is an individual obligation or it is uh, 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 the one which is on the community. Each one of them, we have to think of it as, okay, how do I answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what I have been obliged with? Uh, if there is something good come out of it, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there is anything bad, I ask Allah for forgiveness.